Webhooks are a very powerful tool that we use in web development quite often. In this video, we're going to cover what webhooks are and how we can handle these within Nux using server routes. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we jump in, if you are looking to improve your coding skills, then be sure to check out a platform that I've been working on called Web Dev Daily. It's a free platform that offers daily design to code challenges to complete directly in an innovative VS Code-like browser IDE. Each day, a new Figma design is provided, putting you in the shoes of a professional developer so you can take your skills to the next level. In addition, as you improve your coding skills by completing these challenges, you'll also be building up a portfolio to showcase your work, and you can also learn from others completing the challenges. So if you're interested, be sure to click on the link down below in the description to sign up for your free account. All right, before we jump in, let's first take a quick look at what exactly webhooks are. So as I mentioned, webhooks are a very powerful tool that we use within web development. And the main objective of these are to send messages from apps when something occurs. So to help you understand how webhooks work, I went ahead and created this diagram, which is going to show you the process of how they work with a service called Stripe, since I've been actually working with Stripe to set up pro plans for my application web dev daily. So here inside of this Nuxter application, we're going to have some sort of redirect that takes us to Stripe so the user can pay for that premium plan. Now, once that user goes ahead and completes that process here on Stripe, then Stripe is going to fire off what is called a webhook, or we can also think of this as just an HTT post request to our server for the particular event that just occurred on Stripe. And in my case, the server is going to be webdevdaily.io, but obviously you would replace this with your server. And then we also want to set up an endpoint to go ahead and handle that request. And if you're using Nux, you can actually just go ahead and set up a server route for this. And then here inside of the server route or endpoint, you can then process any logic that you may need to in regards to that event. And that's pretty much all there is to webhooks, so they're actually quite simple. Now, before we had webhooks, what we had to do was we constantly have to actually make requests from our application to the service that we're using, so in this case Stripe, to check and see if that data changed. But now that we have webhooks, instead of constantly having to make get requests to see if our data has changed, we actually just listen for those changes, which is a much easier process. And I also want to point out that this diagram that I have here is not limited to Stripe. It's essentially going to be the same for whatever service that you may be using. So regardless of whatever service that you're using, it's going to react to an event by firing off a webhook or an HTT post request. And then you just simply want to go ahead and listen for that request on your server and you want to create an endpoint to go ahead and handle that request. All right, so now that we know what webhooks are, let's take a look at how we can handle those inside of a Nux3 application. So here I have a bare bones Nux3 application that I just went ahead and created. So what we first wanna do is we have this folder called server, and within here we wanna create a new folder and we're gonna call this API. Now within this folder, our API folder, we wanna create a new file and we're gonna call this webhooks.js. And within this file, what we want to do is we're going to say export and then we'll say default. And then we want to say define event handler. So this accepts a callback with the event as the parameter and the event parameter is going to contain all the information about the particular request that is coming in, such as headers. And we can even access the data that is being sent along with that webhook. So we'll just say event here in the parameter and then we can handle that within this callback function. And for now, just to make sure that everything is working, let's just do a simple console.log and we'll say this is working. All right, so if we save that, then what we want to do is we want to open up our terminal and then we want to start up our development server. So we'll say npm and we'll do run and say dev and that is going to start up the local development server and that did not work. And that would be because we're not in the correct directory. So let's try this again. We want to say cd nux3 and then we can say npm run dev and that is going to spin up our local development server so with our development server up and running i have this open here inside of the browser so we can actually test to make sure our route is working by going to this route inside of our browser so we can say slash api and we can say slash webhooks like this and it's going to take us to nothing and if we actually go back over to our application you can see that we did hit that uh, endpoint because we're now seeing logged out here inside of our terminal the console.log statement we define called this is working 
So now that we're able to confirm that our server route is working, let's go ahead and simulate an actual webhook or post request happening to our endpoint. So to do this, we're actually gonna be using Postman. And inside of the URL, I already copied and pasted this, we're gonna be using our local host port 3000, we'll say slash API, and then we'll do our endpoint of webhooks. And we're also gonna be sending it along a body here. So if we hit send, as you're gonna see, we sent the request, but what's gonna happen is it can't send the request to an API that is local. So that causes an issue when we're actually testing out these webhooks or our server routes locally. Now to go ahead and test your webhooks out locally or while you're developing, you normally would opt for a package called ngrok, which would go ahead and tunnel your URL. And while this is a very good option to go ahead and use, I do believe that in the end, they do start charging you to use a service, which obviously isn't ideal. However, with Nux, we actually get access to a built-in package within Nux that is actually powered by the Unton library, which is going to tunnel our actual local development server for us without having to install anything within our Nux project. It's automatically baked in for us. So what we wanna do to actually uh, tunnel our local development server using what we have within Nux is we want to say NPX, we'll say Nux, and let's actually hover off that. And then we'll say dev and we'll do dash dash and we say tunnel. Now, if this is the first time that you're actually tunneling it or using the command, you may have some prompts to go ahead and accept from Cloudflare to actually tunnel this. But once you do that, you should see now that we have, uh, we have done that, you're going to have a tunneled URL that you can use to go ahead and simulate your webhooks for you. So now if we take our tunneled URL and we head back over to Postman and make that post request, this time it should work because now we have a valid URL. So if we click on send, then as you can see, that post was going to be successful. And if we head back over to VS Code, you can see in the terminal, we have another instance of our log saying this is working. Now here within our webhook server route, if we wanted to gain access to the data that we're sending along within that post request, what we can do is we can create a new variable and we'll call this body. And then we'll set this equal to await and we wanna say read body and we pass in the event. We also wanna make our server route now asynchronous so we can await the actual read body which is going to return us the body that we can use within our server route. So we can save this and then what we can do is say console dot log and we can do body and then we could also return a success message so we can say return and then we'll do success and we'll set this to true all right so now if we head over to postman and we retry this request as you can see once we actually make that request and it's successful we're going to get back return to a success of true and then if we head back over to vs code in the terminal you can now see the body that we send along with it which was the name the age and also the event all right, so that's gonna wrap it up here for this video. So we covered what webhooks are. We looked at how to go ahead and set up webhooks inside of a Nuxter application using server routes. And then we also covered how we can actually run our webhooks while developing locally. So hopefully you're able to learn something new. I know we did just cover the basics when it comes to these webhooks, but hopefully it should give you a good entry point into working with them. And one last thing I wanna mention is that if you are planning on testing webhooks with something like Stripe or something else, then make sure you pass in this tunnel version of your actual development server. Now, if you found this video helpful and you wanna learn more about Nux from me, I am working on a Nux course that will be releasing soon. And if you wanna sign up and join the waitlist, you can head over to learnnux.dev. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.